Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our briefing today. Uh, we'll hear from Public Health, Chief Barnes, uh, and a representative of our fantastic Latino Chamber of Commerce. Uh, just a few things to flag. It is uh, Eat Local Month here in Madison, and conveniently, we have Madison's Fall Restaurant Week happening from the 19th through the 24th. Uh, so it's a chance for you to eat local and celebrate our local businesses at the same time. Um, this Restaurant Week is hosted by Madison Magazine, and for more information, you can visit channel3000.com. Click on the links to get to Restaurant Week. It's always a fun time. Yeah. All right, we're going to start with a briefing from Public Health, so I'll bring up Janelle Heinrich, uh, Director of Public Health, Madison-Dane County. Thank you, Mayor. Good morning. This week brings a mix of updates regarding the COVID-19 pandemic in Dane County, from testing to vaccination, as well as where things stand with cases. Right now, we are seeing an increase in cases locally and statewide. Our seven-day average is currently around 163 people being diagnosed with COVID each day. The last time I spoke at this briefing, two weeks ago, it was 106. Higher than we'd like it to be, but nowhere near the peak we experienced last fall. And some good news. For the past week or so, we have seen hospitalizations stabilize and the number of individuals in the ICU is 65% of our peak last fall. Today, there are 86 individuals hospitalized, including three pediatric patients and 31 people in the ICU with COVID. As the new school year is getting underway, and with students back in the classroom, we are closely monitoring the trends in cases among children. Over the past four weeks, cases have increased among those ages 12 to 17, and in the past two weeks, cases have increased amongst those ages 5 to 11. Kids between the ages of 8 to 11 have a percent positivity of 6%. This higher rate means that more testing might be needed in this age group. We'd like to get that below that 5% threshold. Speaking of testing, with the continued high levels of COVID circulating in our community, I'd like to remind you of the many opportunities available for testing in Dane County. Last week, we were averaging 3,170 tests per day countywide. This week, it is 4,220. The good news, there are a wide variety of options available in Dane County to get a COVID-19 test, including many local pharmacies, your healthcare provider, community-based test sites, and our public health clinic at 2230 South Park Street in Madison. All of the tests available are PCR tests, not rapid tests, and these are the types of tests this is the type of test that's required for traveling events or to be cleared to return to work or school. Testing is also available to all Wisconsin schools through a state Department of Health Services school testing program. This program matches schools with a testing vendor who is able to provide testing supplies, diagnostics, and swabbing services, all free of cost. The goal is to make testing as available as possible to students and staff, as well as members of their household by offering convenient testing options on a schedule that works for our school communities. Most schools in Dane County have opted into this program. So to find out what your school offers, just head to your child's school's website, district website. The bottom line is there are more testing options in Dane County than ever before. And you can find detailed information about testing on our website at publichealthmdc.com slash testing. There have also been many headlines in the news lately regarding COVID vaccines, including a timeline, an update on the timeline for getting younger children vaccinated and for booster doses. Yesterday and today, the Advisory Committee on Immunization Practices is meeting to discuss booster doses for recipients of the Pfizer vaccine for those who are 65 years of age or older and people who are at high risk of severe COVID. We anticipate a final vote by the end of the day today, 
But this doesn't mean that we will be able to begin immunizing individuals for whom third doses are recommended immediately. We will need to wait until the Wisconsin Department of Health Services adopts the vote and provides direction to Wisconsin immunizers. We also anticipate that Pfizer's COVID vaccine will be approved for children five to 11 years old, possibly by the end of October. We know that many families will want to get their children vaccinated as soon as possible. Please know that we are currently working with our healthcare and pharmacy providers to assure that everyone who meets the criteria to get a booster and for those kiddos in this, what we hope will be this newly eligible age group so that everyone will be able to get a vaccine as quickly as possible. Dane County continues to lead the way when it comes to overall vaccination progress. 73.4% of our total population has at least one dose and 84.6% of those who are eligible have at least one dose. As always, if you aren't vaccinated yet, please do so. I encourage you to get the shot. You'll find everything you need to know about vaccine at publichealthmdc.com slash vax, V-A-X. Thank you. Stay well. Thank you, Janelle. And as always, I'll just add my voice to Janelle's and asking everybody to please get vaccinated if you haven't already. It's very good news um, that our kiddos may be able to be vaccinated soon. Uh, but in the meantime, we need to make sure that they are protected by making sure that all of the adults around them are vaccinated. So if you're one of those adults, please make sure that you're vaccinated. All right, next, uh, I just want to alert folks that National Voter Registration Day is coming up. It's September 28th. Um, our clerk's office is very excited about this, as they are every year, making big plans to help folks get registered to vote. If you are not yet registered to vote, or if you have moved since the last time you voted, you will need to update your registration and you can check out our clerk's office online for more information on that or stay tuned to their social media on National Re Voter Registration Day for more information. And now I'd like to bring up our police chief, Sean Barnes, uh, to talk more about the department's strategic plans. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Random acts of violence, including shootings, are but one aspect of a larger set of problems relating to gangs and gun violence. A shooting refers to an incident when someone fires a gun at another, another vehicle, structure, or stationary object. At the Madison Police Department, we track all incidents of gun violence and we investigate all incidents of gun crime. We work hard to keep our public informed. Often, shootings involve multiple suspects and or multiple victims. The use of an unregistered or stolen vehicle allows persons to approach an intended target without being noticed and often speed away before anyone reacts or has the opportunity to witness an event. In some situations, uh, shootings are gang-related in others, they are the result of road rage, personal disputes between persons known to each other, intimate acquaintances, strangers, or are not related to gang violence or gang membership at all. Although some shootings result in a victim's death, many result in non-fatal injuries to persons or to property. Additionally, reports of gun violence affect our community's fear of crime and directly are related to our legitimacy as a police department. Our current data indicates that there were 163 shots fired incidents reported from January 1 to September 20th. During the same time period last year, there were 192 incidents. This is a 15.1% decrease from 2020. However, no incident of gun violence is acceptable. We have been working hard as a department to understand this problem. I believe that understanding the underlying factors that contribute 
to any gun crime or any crime problem will help frame our response to Madison. This includes understanding effective measurements, intervention points, and successful prosecution of prolific offenders. Therefore, our plan is ongoing and includes the following. We have established a Madison Public Safety Partnership, which, it, which is an advisory board that consists of members of the community, the federal and local and state criminal justice system. These members provide subject matter expertise and share data when requested. We have added additional officers to our gang unit and repurposed this unit into the newly formed Gang Neighborhood Crime Abatement Team, or GENCAT for short. This team provides additional coverage and identified hotspots to diffuse incidents of conflict and has aided in the successful apprehension of persons involved in gun crimes. The unit has recovered 13 firearms since its creation and has participated in multiple joint operations with the U.S. Marshal's Office and the Dane County Task Force. We have acquired, through the generosity of our partners at the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms, ATF, a ballistic imaging technology known as NIBIN, the National Integrated Ballistic Information Network. This is the only network that allows for the capture and comparison of ballistic evidence to aid in solving and preventing violent crimes involving firearms. We will be using this technology to compare, trace ballistic evidence in order to link crimes, solve crimes, and prosecute to the fully the most prolific offenders. And finally, community support. We have been meeting with Madison community leaders, concerned community stakeholders, Madison Public Health and faith leaders who wish to offer their support. We must come together as a community in order to solve this issue. I believe the answer is to create healthier communities. I would like to thank the mayor's office for the opportunity to address our Madison community. We care. We are dedicated to creating community consensus and data-informed evidence-based solutions to reduce gun violence in this city. Crime prevention is everyone's responsibility and we can do it together. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. And uh, I just want to say how much I appreciate taking both a data-informed approach and um, how your department is working with public health to make sure that we are treating gun violence as the public health issue that it is. Um, I'm, we have invested in public health's violence prevention unit, um, which I think is doing really good work. Um, and I'm really pleased that the police department is working closely with them um, and bringing a new data-driven focus to address gun violence in our community. All right, as you may know, it is uh, Hispanic Heritage Month in the city of Madison. Um, and if you're looking for a list of things to do, our fantastic public library has uh, assembled that list along with other resources. You can visit madpl.org slash Hispanic dash heritage. But I suspect that our next guest will tell you other options uh, of what you can do to celebrate as well. So I would like to welcome to the podium Jessica Cavazos, the president of our Latino Chamber of Commerce. Jessica, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you so much for having me to he here today. I'm so proud to be able to represent my community, uh, represent the Latino Chamber of Commerce and the Latino Consortium on Action, which is a coalition of all the leadership here in Madison of Latino organizations. My name is Jessica Cavazos. I am the CEO of the Latino Chamber, who was formed in 2003 by a passionate city employees and uh, a consortium of individuals, both leaders and Latino Chamber uh, uh, founders who were from all walks of life and business owners as well. 
Hispanic Heritage Month is celebrated every year from September 15th to October 15th to honor the achievements, contributions, culture, history of Latino and Latin American people in the United States. I always say that you don't become Latino until you reach the United States. And to that time, you are Mexican, Puerto Rican, you are uh, Peruvian, you are from your home country. So the observation started in 1968 as a Heritage Week under President Lyndon B. Johnson, who recognized the contributions of Latinos at that time. It was only expanded to a month after President Reagan also recognized the contributions in 1988 to uh, the growth of Latinos in America. The month commemorates the anniversary of independence of seven Latin American countries, which is Chile, Costa Rica, El Salvador, Guatemala, Honduras, Mexico, and Nicaragua. People with Latin American ancestry now make up 18% of the United States population. The rich history and culture of Latin American people should be celebrated year long, but we're proud to have this month to connect with others on our culture and our rich history. This rich history and culture of Latin American people should be celebrated and honored in many ways. And as the mayor said, there are many events that you can look at the public library's website and, and find out. But there's also ways to honor them by bringing them to the table. And so I want to share a little bit of stats that would help you understand the population here in Dane County. In, the, in Wisconsin, Milwaukee and Dane County are the home to the largest Hispanic and non-Hispanic populations. More than 36% of Wisconsin Hispanics live in Milwaukee County, 8.5% live in Dane County, and that number continues to grow. Not only have we had an influx of new immigrants from Venezuela and Central America, but we're seeing more individuals coming from different parts of the United States to contribute to our great city. The first sizable group of Latin American people to blossom in Madison occurred in the 1950s and 60s, recruited by agricultural and uh, University of Wisconsin uh, recruiters. Through the 1950, average, an average of 14 to 15,000 Mexican Americans and Tejano, meaning from Texas, and other Latin American mi migrants came to Texas came from Texas to Wisconsin to make sure that they would contribute to our agricultural industry. One of my mentors, Jesus Salas, was one of those individuals who came in that, in that wave of migration. He championed better living and working conditions for Tejano families. He railed his fellow Tejano workers and played a central role building the movement in Wisconsin's history and here in Madison. The beautiful part of living here in Madison is there is great diversity. Latinos are helping uh, create a stronger economy and our workforce is thriving with Latino participation. Latinos are helping uh, move our economy because a lot of the, the population is still growing. So 25% is youth, is a very youthful population uh, from 18 to 26 years old. And uh, our Latino youth here in Madison say and that they love the city and they would wish there were more opportunities for Latinos in Madison. So how do we create opportunities? We invite them to the table. We create opportunities through employment, through internships, connecting more students to the university system, uh, and, and, and making people who are here or have been here for decades understand that they are welcomed and are part of our uh, economic ecosystem. Uh, in closing, I want to say that the Latino Chamber of Commerce will continue to create those opportunities and are helping shape an active, uh, trusted, active and trusted part of the community through our programmings and through our partnerships with many Latino organizations. Latino organizations that like the Latino Children in Action uh, Committee, the Latino Children and Family Council, the Latino Academy for Workforce Development, Latino Education Council of Dane County, Orgullo Latinx, Omega School, Latino Health Council, LUCES, uh, Centro Hispano, of course, Latino Professionals Associations, Catholic Multicultural Center, Unidos, Latino Chamber, of course, and uh, of course our, our um, Consortium for Action Latino, 
uh, Consortium for Action, which provides all, uh, all our organizations the leadership and continuity to do, to do the work we do. So as you continue to celebrate, I hope that you will connect with Latinos, find out where they come from, and, and celebrate the rich history and contributions they bring to our city. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jessica, and I just want to say how much I appreciate the partnership between the city and the chamber. Um, you all are doing fantastic work, um, and I'm really pleased to have you be a part of our economic development efforts. Um, and I do want to encourage everybody to take a moment during Hispanic Heritage Month to appreciate the contributions of the Latinx folks in Madison. Um, perhaps you want to seek out a new business, a member of the chamber that uh, you haven't visited or patronized before, perhaps in that long list of organizations that Jessica just read, there's some that you're not familiar with that you want to seek out and get familiar with uh, what they offer or what support they need in our community. It's a great opportunity to just expand your horizons a little bit uh, this month. Uh, all right, so I have a few announcements to go through. Um, just to remind folks that uh, despite COVID, all city services are available and many city offices are open, um, some of them operating by appointment. Um, you can view uh, any service updates at cityofmadison.com slash health dash safety slash coronavirus. There's a link for service updates. I just also wanna note that if the service or office that you're looking for is in the city county building. The, the uh, floors above the second floor are right now operating on restricted access. So you'll need to check in um, at the front desk right in the right through the front lobby um, and have somebody come down and, and get you to visit an office or call up for more information. All right, uh, as I think most folks know, um, we are canceling Freak Fest for 2021 and we're asking everybody to just be extra careful um, as you are gathering or celebrating um, any particular holiday, including Halloween. Um, we know that cases of the Delta variant are still on the rise in uh, Madison, in our state and our country. And we wanna make sure that we're helping to keep our community safe. I've said before that alcohol and COVID don't mix particularly well. And so I think it's particularly important on Halloween uh, and downtown that people be responsible and safe uh, if they're celebrating, whether that's Halloween or homecoming or anything else. Um, so we really strongly recommend that people follow the CDC guidelines um, certainly starting with getting vaccinated if you're not already, wearing a mask indoors, avoiding crowded spaces, and uh, washing your hands frequently. Uh, for trick-or-treaters, public health recommends that you give treats uh, outdoors, and limit contact with others. Perhaps you wanna wear a mask, um, and then please wash your hands before you're handling those treats. We're just trying to keep everybody safe uh, as we head into fall here. Um, also happening right now is redistricting. And I really urge people to pay attention to this process. Um, the City of Madison's Ad Hoc Redistricting Committee is working hard. They have developed two scenarios for feedback. There is lots of ways that you can provide that feedback. I really encourage you to look at the maps and to um, make comments on them so that, the, that your feedback can inform the final map options. Uh, so options for um, comment, uh, you can uh, look at uh, the maps and talk with staff at certain libraries. Um, that includes the Central Library, the Monroe Street Library, and the Goodman South Library. Tomorrow, the 24th, is the last chance to do this in person. So you can visit Central Library from 9 a.m. to noon, Monroe Street from 10 a.m. to 1, or Goodman South from 1 to 4 p.m. You can also visit the city's online interactive redistricting map and provide comments directly on the map, or you can email comments to redistricting at cityofmadison.com. 
We are moving on a really short time frame here because the census data was delayed. Um, so we really do need folks to pay attention now. For more information and all of the ways that you can give your input, visit cityofmadison.com slash redistricting. I really encourage people to, to get involved in this. Some good news, um, Madison B-Cycle has teamed up with our fantastic libraries and uh, our Madison Public Library Foundation to launch a community pass program, um, which means that you can uh, use your Madison Public Library card to check out a B-Cycle um, and access one of over 300 electric bikes in our community. Um, so you can go to any Madison Public Library, use your library card to check out a B-Cycle Pass. They can be checked out for up to a week at a time, and you can use that to uh, ride a B-Cycle uh, from any station. So I encourage people to take advantage um, of this uh, way option for um, uh, low impact transportation, and I hope that it includes it encourages people to get out there and bike in our community. Uh, you can read more about the community pass program at madison.bcycle.com. Want to give folks a heads up that East Johnson Street from North Street to North Lawn Ave is closed, uh, fully closed for water main work um, and it will stay closed until that work is completed, which should be sometime in late October. Also, sections of the southwest path will be closed for resurfacing uh, and there will be marked detours. So the section from Commonwealth Ave to Glenway Street will be closed uh, starting the morning of the 27th through October 1st. Uh, the section from Odana Road to Hammersley Road, which is south of the Beltline, will be closed starting October 4th through October 8th. I'm sorry to say that we have had another fire in a recycling truck. This is the second time this year, and um, I just really have to emphasize this happens because people put things in their recycling that do not belong in their recycling. So we need you, only you, can prevent recycling truck fires. Um, we think that this is likely uh, because um, there was lithium batteries in the recycling um, and it, the result was a fire in which all of the recycling that was in that truck had to go to the landfill, which is really sad. Uh, so please do not put batteries into your recycling bins. They don't belong there. Um, neither do any uh, things that might be powered by lithium batteries, whether that's your cell phone or a key fob or anything like that. Uh, please, 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 please go to the Recyclopedia and find out what actually belongs in your recycling cart and only put those things in it. Um, you can find that online uh, from the Streets Division website or at our Madison Public Libraries. You can recycle batteries safely. There are drop-off locations um, that the Streets Division offers. Again, check the Streets Division website to learn how to properly package and deliver your batteries to those drop-off sites. We'd like to prevent any future recycling truck fires. Thank you. Uh, a couple of other announcements. We are coming up on the Wisconsin Book Festival's fall celebration, October 21st through 24th. Um, so check out wisconsinbookfestival.org. Um, lots of great events happening. Encourage you to get engaged. And thanks again to our public library um, and the Public Library Foundation for partnering to put the book festival on. I want to just remind folks of community resources. Uh, COVID is still in our community, still impacting uh, families, economic situation, and uh, obviously our small business community as well. If you or someone you know is in need, call United Way at 211 or text your zip code to 898-211 and they can access all sorts of resources and connect you if you need food resources, housing resources, clothing, whatever it might be. Uh, please reach out. There's no shame in asking for help. 
Um, if you need uh, access to computers or the internet uh, for any reason or to access a community resource, our libraries um, have appointments to uh, work on the computers there. You can go to your local library or you can call 608-266-6300. These resources and more posted at cityofmadison.com. Click on the community resources link. We also highlight things that are going on in the city um, and other resources that are available on my blog. That's cityofmadison.com slash mayor slash blog. I encourage you to read um, and also to sign up uh, to get notified when new blogs come out. Upcoming meetings are uh, today, the 23rd, at 4.30, Housing Strategy Committee meeting will meet. At 5, the Disability Rights Commission meets. On the 27th, which is Monday, at 4.30, the Finance Committee meets. We'll be taking up the capital budget. Uh, it's another process you should be paying attention to. On the 28th, Tuesday, at 4.30, the Water Utility Board meets. On Thursday, the 30th, at 4.00. The Ad Hoc Redistricting Committee meets, another chance for you to tune in and learn more about that process and make public comment if you want. At 5, the Plan Commission will meet on Thursday the 30th. On Monday, October 4th at 2, the Ad Hoc Redistricting Committee meets again. At 5, the Transportation Policy and Planning Board. At 5.30, the Plan Commission and also at 5.30, the City County Homeless Issues Committee. On Tuesday the 5th at 6.30, the Common Council will meet. On Wednesday the 6th at 4.30, the Board of Public Works. And at 5, the Board of Health for Madison and Dane County. And that is what I have for this week. I know we have questions. So let's start with um, questions for public health. Okay, Jill, Mayor. You want to come back up? Janelle, the question for you is where can people go for community testing and where can they go after hours? We're hearing that many people are going to the emergency room and hospitals are asking people to not do that. Well, we absolutely want to keep our health care systems available to care for those who are sick. So if you are symptomatic, if you are unwell, that's when you need to go to the the hospital, get seek, seek testing from your health care provider. But I encourage you to look at our website, and again, that's publichealthmdc.com slash testing to look for some different community options available, whether that's at, through pharmacies or other test sites that may have uh, expanded hours and, and different testing that's available in our community. All right, I think we have some questions for the chief. All right, chief, come on back up. Chief, let's start with, can you share more about how the police department is working with public health to address violence in Madison? Absolutely. I mentioned earlier that we're putting together the Madison um, Public Safety Partnership. They are a big part of that. We also share data um, with uh, public health, and we also work with them uh, on any violence reduction response. For example, the Focus Interruption Coalition is housed under their unit, so we absolutely have to communicate with them uh, when we have a critical incident. However, we want to use them more proactively, and so we've had those conversations about when we see conflict uh, in our communities before it escalates to gun violence, being able to use that group, and they have allowed me to do that. Okay, thank you. Um, a second question is, each MPD district has a strategic plan for the summer, and each of the plans included specific goals for reducing specific crimes by certain percentages. Can you say which districts met those goals for which crimes and by what percentage decrease? Absolutely. Our strategic planning uh, process for the summer ended the first week in September. Um, it usually takes about 30 days to reconcile all data, all reports, uh, checking for errors to making sure that data is correct. I do have some preliminary data citywide that I can share with you, but we plan on having an additional press conference to discuss those individual cities, excuse me, those individual districts. Uh, it's important to note that most of the plans uh, included residential burglary. Currently for the quarter citywide, residential burglaries have decreased by 7.9%. Most of the plans in, uh, included stolen auto. For the quarter, stolen auto citywide reduced by 3.7%.
and most of the plans included um, retail theft, and retail theft was reduced by 15.1%. Uh, uh, so definitely trending uh, in the right direction citywide. However, we need some more time to aggregate the data district-wide. Thank you, Chief. Another question you have is, is 2021 data on shots fired calls influencing patrol officer assignments? Well, absolutely. When those calls go out, uh, we respond. Uh, we respond in force. Uh, we look for information. We look for um, surveillance video or anything that we can have open source uh, information uh, in order to solve those crimes. So absolutely, when those crimes occur, um, our patrol officers uh, who are the first ones on scene are definitely affected. They are also a big part of the strategic plan. Uh, we do something called COPA patrols, which simply says that we identify hot spots and areas where conflict may occur. We have those officers go there for about 15 to 20 minutes and do something proactive in the community. It could be foot patrol. It could be passing out community prevention information. It could be stationary patrol. It could be a line patrol. And what happens is when the officers leave, the data shows that there is some efficacy to that, maybe about an hour and an hour and a half. And then an additional officer has to respond and do something proactive uh, in that community. So, yes, it does affect our patrolling. And I have one more question for you, sure. Chief. Community concerns are being expressed about the past of a member of your department who is currently on administrative leave in connection to an incident inside his unmarked police vehicle. Have past complaints been lodged against this member of your department, and has he been the subject of any past discipline? Thank you. You know, as this is an ongoing open investigation, I will not be releasing the name uh, of the employee or any identifying characteristics of that employee. Um, I can tell you that I'm aware that the allegations of this incident involved an individual who is an alleged prostitute. Uh, we take the matter of human trafficking very seriously, and I can assure the community that the individual involved in this incident has been contacted and that this individual is not, I repeat, is not a prostitute, nor is there any evidence that the individual has a history of ever being a prostitute. Those are all our questions for today. Great. Thank you. All right. Any questions for me or Jessica? You're off the hook. All right. Thank you all very much uh, for tuning in today, and thanks, everybody, for coming to this briefing. We will see you all in two weeks. Have a great day. Get outside and enjoy this beautiful sunny weather.